Yo, what's up, everybody? Jumping yeah, and today I am back on some Marvel's Avengers, and I'm gonna be showing you my extremely overpowered Iron Man in-game build. I call it the Rocket Man. This build literally just one-shots most enemies, and if it's not one-shotting, it's definitely two-shotting, and against some really extremely strong enemies, it might be three-shotting, but the damage is out of this world. And the DPS is just insane because you can just fire these missiles so fast. And if you play it the way I play it, oh my god. I mean, it is ridiculous. So I will be going into detail here about my gear and the skills and everything you need to know about this build. But here you can see kind of what it does. I'm going to be just destroying everything. Now, a couple notes about this build. One, I do take advantage of the Dark Hold artifact. I made a video about this. With this build, I can actually exploit a little bit, and I can have unlimited heroics, unlimited powers. That is insane, but to be honest with you, I don't even need to in most cases, just because in any given room, if I just use the artifact one time, that's all I need, or any boss battle. Normally, the DPS is so high that I'm going to kill everything. I don't have to just constantly be doing it. But it is something you can do if you don't know about that. I will put a link in the description to that other video if you're interested to know how you can actually take advantage of this artifact because it is extremely ridiculous on Iron Man because Iron Man is the one who can really take advantage of it and man it is crazy. Now one thing I do want to mention in the gameplay portion of this video because it's important I think a lot of people might not realize this is that when you are in the air when you're flying you actually get a cost reduction for your missiles. So if you are floating or hovering, if you're airborne, it's going to cost you a lot less to shoot the missiles. That's something that a lot of people might not like about the missiles. They will play with them and they're like, man, these things, they're good, but they drain way too much energy. Well, if you're in the air, you will not have that problem. Also, this build is mainly focusing on the support ability, the arc field, because when we have this up, we have unlimited energy and we can just spam. We can just spam like crazy. And that's essentially what we do. Now you can aim in with your missiles and have them lock on. You can stay further back. But honestly, I don't even bother with that. I just kind of generally aim where I want to shoot and I just spam the button. And you will shoot really quickly like this and you will do some insane damage. One-shotting most enemies or two-shotting, maybe sometimes three-shotting. It depends on your crits. One thing that this build is also using is damage buffs. And with the damage buffs, it allows me to basically have an insane amount of crit chance. And I can just crit all the time. And my crits hit extremely hard. Now, another thing about the missiles, they do hit twice on any given target. So, sometimes you might get a double crit. And other times, you might get a single crit. But, when you do see numbers like 70,000, you can easily get 70,000 times 2. And then other times, you get even way bigger numbers than that you can see in the gameplay but if you can get those numbers times two it's just outrageous alrighty so now I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know about this build all of the gear and all the skills that you're going to need if you want to copy it for yourself alrighty now the first thing I'm going to talk about is the gear and then I'll talk about the skills now the first thing you're going to notice is I actually have some purples on that is because this build is going to rely on RNG. And to be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with using purples. Basically, we are going to have to get certain stats, and we also want certain perks on our armor. And because of that, you're going to find a lot of really good purples, where it might be a little bit trickier to get the good legendaries. And because purples are basically almost the same as legendaries, there's no reason not. To use purples if you can actually get some really good ones also it's a lot cheaper to upgrade a purple than the legendary it's going to cost a lot less materials to get it to 140 than any legendary so that's another thing that's kind of nice about purples but in my experience there's not much of a difference between the purples and the legendaries maybe the stats are or at least the perks are a little bit less that's something i have kind of noticed but overall i still think the purples are pretty much just as good, if not as good as the legendaries. So that is good news, but it's also bad news because we're not using any set items. Now with all the other heroes, I use set items. You get those from Hives, you get them from Vault, 
you get them from villain sector so you go and do those and you get one of these set pieces now those always come with the same stats the same perks and the thing is is i don't like any of them on iron man at least for this build i don't like none of them now i will say that there is one that might be good i've tried farming it i've tried getting it i've gotten it several times and never drops with what i want it to drop with and i don't know if it even can i will talk about that but that particular one could be good but outside of that all the other ones i really wouldn't bother with so we're just trying to get random drops, so you might end up using purples. Now, I do want to talk about the ratings. Obviously, this is a range build, so we want a high range rating. I also have a somewhat high heroic rating. That's mainly because with Valor, you get critical damage, and that's good. Also, I do spam my powers. I do do that because I'm using Dark Hold. I made a whole video about this, which is the major artifact. And if you haven't seen that, you can check it out. But because I'm using this, I can spam my powers. I have infinite heroic powers. So I do want to have a little bit higher of a heroic rating because that does actually boost the damage of my heroics. Now, one thing that I've kind of realized, though, is that depending on the heroic you're talking about, if it is a melee heroic, your melee rating is also going to boost it. From what I could tell, it seems like the heroic effectiveness stat and let's say the range stat will affect your range heroic ability like unibeam for example so if i have both of these high my unibeam is going to hit really hard now i do think that your heroic effectiveness is always going to outweigh the range damage when it comes to your heroic damage but the range damage can actually affect Unibeam. If you didn't know that, I just want to clear that up because I've tested that and I'm super confident that's the way it works. So that's kind of one of the things I'm going for. I want crit damage and I want that heroic effectiveness. Now when it comes to melee rating and defense rating, that doesn't matter as much. The defense rating obviously can keep you alive, but I do dodge a lot. That's kind of the strategy. I shoot, I dodge, I shoot, I dodge. And normally, I can stay alive no problem. When I do use my heroics, when I use my arc field, which is my main source of DPS, I'm pretty much invincible in that bubble because I'm in the air, so melee attacks cannot hit me, and range attacks cannot hit me either. So that's one of the nice things about that. And it's the same when I do go in to my Hulkbuster, I'm completely invincible, and that's also very, very nice. Now, I will not actually talk about Dark Hold here. Like I said, it's actually really, really overpowered on Iron Man just because you can use this to have infinite powers. I made a whole video about that if you want to check it out. But another good one is actually the first one that you get. This one is all about your damage buffs. And guess what? I really do like this a lot. I kind of regret upgrading it as much as I did because I wish I could have actually got a refund on that because later on I discovered Dark Hold and I wish I could have actually got this maxed out but it's really whatever this is another really good one that if they ever do nerf or fix this exploit with Dark Hold you might want to play around with this other one it's up to you I still would probably use Dark Hold though even though you would maybe have to actually wait the full five minutes to use it again in a pinch, being able to get your powers back, getting your Hulkbuster back and your Arc Field back for this build is more than enough. Like, just doing it once is more than enough. In any situation, any room you're in, any boss battle you're in, you will destroy that room with Iron Man, with this build. So I still would probably use Dark Hold just because that is just way too good. Now, I will actually talk about the minor artifacts. Now, this is something... The perks on these really don't matter. Now, there are ones that can give you different cooldowns for your Assault or your Ultimate or your Support. I will say that if they do fix Dark Hold, you might want to go for those. Maybe for your Ultimate, maybe for your Support. That is something that I would probably do. But right now, the perks, they don't really matter. We're not doing power attacks. Now, there are power attacks you can do with your missiles. You hold down the heavy button, and you'll do a power attack. I think those suck. I never do those. So we aren't doing those. We're really not doing our signature attacks. We're not really melee attacking. So the thing is, is that 
all of these perks, a lot of them, we're really not using. So instead, we're just kind of looking at the stats. And what you want to get is you want to get a lot of precision. So I go for a ton of precision on these. Now, I will say that you could go for other things depending on what you need. If you feel like you need more proficiency, you can go for that. If you feel like you need valor, you can go for that. Maybe if you want defense, you can go for that as well. It's just up to you. But the main thing we don't want is might. That's the main thing. But if you want to get a very high range rating, the artifacts is a really easy way of doing that. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is actually the support piece. I always just say the fourth piece of armor because I don't really know what you call these, but I guess these are technically your support piece of armor. But with this one, this one is good. It has precision. It has proficiency. That's fine. The main reason I'm using this is that it actually gives me a damage buff for defeating enemies. That's the one I want to get on here because I'm not doing takedowns. Now, there is one that you can get on your support which will be you get a percentage chance of getting a damage buff when doing a takedown. Now, on a lot of heroes, that's really good. On Iron Man, not so much. I'm always in the air, so I'm not really doing takedowns. So instead, I just want that chance of getting a damage buff by defeating enemies. That is something I'm always doing. Now, I wanted to point this out. This is something that you can get from doing your daily bounty missions from the factions. Now, those have been bugged for me. It's been almost a week and it doesn't let me do any of them. So I'm not able to farm them. And that's a bummer because every time I would do them, I would do them on Iron Man. Even though I'm playing all the heroes, I would do them on Iron Man because there are certain perks that come on his purples that are really good. And this is one of them. Now, I don't know if this always will come with might and proficiency because if it does, I really can't get past that might. I don't want that might. And also, you know, the other perks on here, I want them to be particular things if possible. But that perk, 25% increased ranged damage while overcharged, that sounds amazing. I haven't seen that on anything else. That is something I definitely want on a piece if I can get it. Now, just quickly, I want to show this because this makes me mad. These are all of the set items that you can get for the support. And some of these are really good. But every single one of these, they come with might. I don't know why that is. Obviously, it's Iron Man. There are going to be really good, powerful, ranged builds with him. I don't know why they made every single one of these might. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And the one that I would use if I could get maybe precision on it instead of might would be this one because you get increased damage with Hawkbuster. I use those missiles on the Hawkbuster. It's awesome. I would love to be able to use this. Plus, you get that cooldown for the ultimate. That's really nice as well. So this is the one I would use. I would maybe also use this one because when you do have your barrier out, it can electrocute enemies. That sounds really cool. The second perk, though, I never do takedowns, so I wouldn't actually benefit from that at all. And then this other one, this other one's all right as well. I'll be honest. They're all good. It's just that they all come with might. Now, when it comes to the chess piece, I actually have Valor and Precision. Now, there are other things you can get, but I decided to just stick with this one because it came with a decent Precision stat and a decent Valor stat on it. It also gives me damage reduction while aiming. I never really aim. I don't benefit from that. One thing you can get on a chess piece, though, is you can get damage reduction while airborne. That's a good perk because you're always going to be in the air with this build. Now, another thing that this comes with is a 22.4% chance of getting a damage buff while doing a perfect invade. Now, with the play style of this where I'm shooting and dodging, shooting and dodging, I will be getting perfect invades from time to time. And when that happens, I have a chance of getting a damage buff. So that's actually really cool and I'll take it. Now, in my opinion, though, the better perk that you would want to get would actually be a it's about 15 percent chance. But you get about a 15 percent chance of getting a damage buff by taking damage. So that's something that's just going to happen. You're going to get shot with projectiles. You're going to get hit. And when you get hit, you do have a chance of getting a damage buff. I think that's a much, much better perk than the perfect evade one just because it's going to be more consistent you're going to get it to happen a lot more 
Now, when it comes to my ranged weapon, my big problem with this one is actually intensity. I have intensity on here. I'm not using intensity. I don't really care about it. It does give me status reduction, which is nice, but I don't care about stunning enemies. I am just doing massive DPS. That's the whole plan of this build. So intensity, I don't really care about it. But Valor, I'll take it. It's crit damage. Proficiency, that's great. I would like to have precision on this. That would have been better in my opinion, but whatever. Now the element for the missiles is particle. You can honestly use whatever element you get. It's either going to be plasma particle or it's going to be gamma. They're all good in their own way. Particle though is kind of interesting. When it does proc, there are times where you can get numbers that are insane. And that's to do with particle. What particle does is that it will debuff the enemy. And when it actually does kick in, you're going to do a lot more damage to the enemy. You would think that would happen when the enemy would shrink down. But from what I can tell, I don't think it does. The numbers look the same to me. And just randomly sometimes, I will just start hitting for like the most insane numbers. I'm talking like 200,000. And that's times two because when the missiles hit, they hit twice. I've seen that pop up. Like 175 or 198,000 times two so yeah that is ridiculous but that's something to do with particle i'm pretty sure so particle might be the way to go but i also think gamma's good and like i said it doesn't really matter just get an element on your missile now the third perk that's one that you definitely want that is one that if you defeat an enemy with a critical attack a ranged critical attack you don't want the ones about weak points because with the weak point ones, you actually have to get a headshot. With the range critical, as long as you get a crit and they die, you have a chance of getting a damage buff. So that is awesome. Now the first perk as well. The first perk is interesting because you can actually get one that will give you a damage buff for hitting an enemy with a ranged critical. Now one thing I haven't really touched on is how amazing damage buffs are they really are amazing when you get a damage buff you're going to notice your dps is going to go up by a whole bunch now one thing i forgot to mention i did want to bring this up when i was talking about the stats is the critical chance because my critical chance is somewhat low it's only 18.6 but here's the thing you do have teammates if anyone's playing like miss marvel for example she's so good if she has a certain support armor piece that she can get it's one of her set items then she can give the entire team like 35 percent crit chance that's amazing and then you have other people who can also help with crit chance so that's something that your teammates can help you with your crit chance but damage buffs not only will they buff your damage they buff your crit chance by a lot all you have to do is if you have a damage buff and by the way, it has to be a damage buff. It has to say it like on the armor piece, like do this and you'll get a damage buff. It can't just be like, oh, I use my arc field and because it says increased damage, that's a damage buff. No, no, no. It's got to be an actual damage buff from a piece of armor. But when you get that damage buff, take a look at your critical chance. Just go ahead and pause it and take a look. Mine goes up to like 53% when I have a damage buff. So it's really easy for me to get a damage buff because I have multiple ways of doing it. Once I get a damage buff, I have a really great crit chance. Basically, it's like 50-50. And it can't be even higher if I'm playing with certain people who can give me even more crit chance. Now, if you have a lot more proficiency than me, then that's something that can also play into it. You will be critting almost nonstop. So it is something that you can work towards but damage buffs are amazing it's amazing for your damage but it's also amazing for crit chance so that's something to consider and the reason why we're bringing all this up is because one of the things you want to get on your melee weapon your gauntlets you got to get armory flare you get increased critical attack damage from all weapons now there's another one that says you get increased critical attack damage while overcharged when I first seen that, I thought, oh, that seems very odd. I don't know why they would have that when I can just get increased critical damage from all weapons. That just seems better than me. Now, the problem with this one, by the way, is that I got this at like, I think it was 126. So this one, I cannot actually get to 140. I do have another one. I want to show this off. 
This one is a little bit less, but it comes with Valor. To be honest with you, I just prefer to have the Precision over the Valor. My damage is better with the Precision. That is something. But I do have this one if I actually want to go ahead and take it up and boost it up to 140 eventually. I probably might end up doing that. But that perk is insane. And like I said, there are other perks. One is you get critical damage while overcharged. That actually is all your critical damage, your melee included. When it says weapons, it's just talking about your ranged attacks, your lasers, your missiles, your repulsors. So that's what that's about. And also there's another piece, and it's this one right here. It's actually increased critical attack damage from Hulkbuster. So that's its own separate thing as well. So if I wanted to do a Hulkbuster build, this is what you would want to use. So you get the idea, but that's why damage buffs are so good. It's because they give you a huge amount of critical chance they give you more damage, and if you actually have this one perk, this is amazing. It's an amazing, amazing perk for Iron Man. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the skills and what you want. This is, should be pretty simple because there's not really too much to go over with this. But let's go ahead and talk about the arc field first because I 100% say use the bubble. The bubble is the way to go just because... The bubble is going to protect you, not from the ground, from the air. When you're in the air, the enemies who would melee you can't melee you. And the only thing that's going to annoy you is going to be projectiles, especially homing projectiles. Those are the worst. So having the bubble is going to protect you from projectiles. Now, it's up to you on what you want to do. You can go for the defensive bubble, which will reflect the projectiles. But to be honest with you... It's really not all that good. You could go for the ability to revive your teammates. Now, I've tried this, and the thing is, you got to be really close to them. I thought maybe I could do it from pretty far away, but because I'm always in the air, the problem is the chance of me actually reviving them, I literally have to go down to where they are and then pop it to revive them. So it's up to you on which one you might want, but for me, I just use the reflect one. But I don't think the Reflect one is honestly all that good. Now, when it comes to the Unibeam, Omega Beam, it's way more powerful. I definitely prefer this one. And also, I wanted to drop Heroic Orbs. It helps my teammates out. There's been times where I've wiped out giant mobs of enemies with Unibeam and made a ton of orbs. This can also help you as well. If you're really close to getting your Arc Field, you can go ahead and just use Unibeam, get one orb, pick it up. Now you have your arc field, and now you can do some crazy DPS. And that's also going to be more important when they do eventually fix the whole dark hold exploit that you can do on Iron Man. Now for the actual ultimate, the Hawkbuster, what I like to do is I like to hop in it and shoot my missiles. This is a Rocket Man build, so we are using missiles on the Hawkbuster. You will hit so many enemies with this. It will wipe out entire rooms. It does insane damage to big enemies and bosses. Hawkbuster with the missiles is insane. Now, normally, you can only use two barrages of missiles. But if you go for this one, the Energy Star, it reduces the cost to fire the missiles. So you can actually get off three clusters of missiles with this. Now, when it comes to the Masteries, some of these are really important, and some of these aren't as important. Like, the first one is Stun Mastery. Just go for this. It makes the most sense for this column. We're not really going for stuns. We're not going for takedowns. But this can be helpful for your teammates, mainly. And the rockets will absolutely help stun enemies very quickly. So, this is good. I would recommend this. Same with the takedowns. We're not really doing takedowns, but if we do do a takedown, make a heroic orb. It's good for yourself. It's good for your teammates. Now, when it comes to this one, I say just go for the damage for range attacks. It's just a flat general damage. This makes sense. The second one is crit damage, which would be good if you have a really, really high critical chance. I don't really have a high enough critical chance to think that this would be better than just the general damage. So I say go for the general damage. But one thing I do want to mention is the cost reduction. Now, if you couldn't do the Dark Hold exploit where you have the infinite heroics and because of that, you technically have infinite energy because you can constantly keep 
popping your arc field over and over again. Because of all of that, having the reduction is nice. This can help you shoot way more missiles. And remember, when you're airborne, you will automatically have a cost reduction. That's something I think a lot of people who play Iron Man, they don't realize. I see them all the time. They're meleeing on the ground and they're shooting their ranged weapons on the ground. When you do that, it will drain your energy super quick. Where if you're in the air with the rockets, you can really spam them. And with this, you can spam them a lot more. So it is pretty decent something to consider i still would probably go for the damage but it is something you might want to consider now this is easy if you're using rockets obviously just go for everything that's all about rockets the first one will give you more damage the second one will help you actually with aiming the rockets oh my god this is so nice aiming the rockets is a nightmare once you get this it's really really easy because it just automatically locks on it's great and then finally this is nice. Once again, it will reduce the cost. At first, you're like, man, these rockets are great, but they are costing a lot. Then you will realize, okay, you know, it's not as bad anymore because I got that cost reduction. That's why if you combine the two together, it's even better. Really, really nice. Now for this one, I definitely will say that just getting the regeneration, I think is the best. It does help. Your energy will come back on its own fairly quickly i like it a lot now for this one i go for the two seconds in the overcharge state just because when you're overcharged you're going to automatically regenerate energy it's helpful everything else here i mean stunning enemies can give you an instant 25 energy that's not bad same with getting a perfect evade can give you 15 energy that's not bad but when we do our arc field it automatically will overcharge us and this will increase the duration of that. So I like it. Now, I think this one's the same deal. Just go for the damage. The damage just makes sense. You want to do more damage if possible while overcharged. The only other one I think that's okay is damage reduction. This is not bad. So it's up to you on which one you want. But I say go for the damage. That makes sense. And this stuff. Now, I haven't even talked about energy shield. It is something you can use because... It can help you with your crit chance. So the first one, go for the cost reduction of it. And then the second one, you can go ahead and go for the critical chance. Now, it's weird because I've tried doing this so many times. The problem is you'll put this out and then you'll accidentally shoot the barrier. So that's kind of a bummer. But the idea would be that you put it out and then you shoot enemies and you get a 15% critical chance. That would be definitely not bad. And then the final one, I go for the countermeasures. These are flares because the homing projectiles and certain projectiles are stupidly annoying. And the good news is that you don't have to be flying to do this. You can do this while you're hovering and just dodging. So if you see like a homing projectile coming at you, if you double dodge, you can actually shoot out flares and get rid of it. So that is really, really nice. All righty. So that's going to do it for the video. This build is insane. These missiles just hit so hard. And the DPS of this is just out of this world. Especially if you're able to consistently non-stop use your arc field if needed. If you are doing the dark hold exploit on top of everything else. It is outrageous. This build is so powerful that I feel bad when I'm playing it with like other people. Because I kill things so fast I feel like they're not even having fun. I'm literally stealing every kill with Iron Man. And I've played with all the heroes. I have them all leveled up. I have them all powered up as well. And I have builds on every one of them. And I gotta say, like, out of all of them, this Iron Man one is just the most ridiculous one. There's no doubt in my mind. I would really appreciate it if you could like this video for me. It definitely helps me out. And make sure to subscribe. If you want to see future Marvel's Avengers content, subscribe. I will be coming out with different builds. And I do have everything powered up, so if you want to make recommendations, go ahead, that's fine. If you do subscribe though, click the bell, that way you can stay notified. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out!